Hello, I'm Mike Power, a local historian. With other colleagues, we are working to research and communicate the many attractions of this historic local area of Fingal. My own Facebook pages give practical suggestions on how your family might best enjoy your visit to the park, specific suggestions for enjoyable walks, and more information on the rich history and heritage of the area. To the newcomer, the Forest Park presents a picture of haphazard development, disconnected pathways and overgrown vegetation. Each successive human phase, and there have been many, have left their own distinctive mark on the landscape we see today. Paths tend to follow the natural lie of the land and connect sites which were of importance throughout the history of the park. Successively, the park has been a pleasure garden in the 18th century, a working farm in the 19th century. One clearly and unhelpful biological impact on the park has been the unchecked and invasive impact of the cherry laurel, Prunus laura cerastus, throughout every part of the park. Laurel suppresses any competing plants and its search for light extends its sinewy length, blocking off access to park. Nature cycles have also complicated the scene in the park with fallen trees, flooded banks and rampant growth obscuring the original picture. These features complicate the work of any historian trying to recreate how the park looked at any one particular historical time. The Ward Valley is a unique geological feature in this area of Fingal. It was formed originally by geological earth movements which excavated a deep ravine, leaving boulder-rich deposits of glacial clay on both sides. These banks can be seen to extend from Kilik to the west, through Noxidan Bridge, past Brackenstown, through River Valley, Highfield, and into Sorge Village itself, ending at the Malahide Estuary. The Noxidan and Brackenstown Road itself sits on the northern bank of one of these clay deposits. Over time, the Ward River deepened this ravine further, exposing the bedrock of hard limestone underneath. This geological formation gives the valley its distinct character with its high steep sides, heavily wooded flanks, crisscross pathways and water meadows adjacent to the river. Over the years, People have trodden their own distinctive pathways through the park and enabling direct access into and beyond the park. The park is very connected with its hinterland, sited as it is between the R18 road to the south, the Brackenstown road to the north, Noxidan bridge to the west and Swords village to the east. You will find a more detailed history of the park on the Facebook pages I already mentioned. However, suffice it to say that this area has been home to many, many generations of swords people, perhaps even stretching back to prehistoric days. Plentiful game and fish attracted many settlers. The monastic site of swords also played a part, while the castle, being within the pale, drew Anglo-Normans to the area. The site of Brackenstown House has been in continuous occupation since 1620. This is the large walled estate sited to the south of the park. This is private land. The 19th century also saw great development within the park in terms of the mechanical control of the river through sluices, holding ponds and the construction of extensive buildings. Much of the fine architecture to be seen in the park today dates from the middle 18th century, including ornamental styles, stone water features, ponds, stone walls and stone river banking. All of this was Viscount Molesworth's work, as he wished his park and home to rival those of other wealthy landowners of that day. The pond we see today was called Usher's Lake by locals, referring to Harry Usher who stabled horses here in the 40s and 50s. This lake, in fact, was also created by Viscount Molesworth to provide his guests with genteel boating excursions back in the 1740s. The River Ward connects all areas of the park. Rising to the west in Mead, it flows through Kilik, under Noxidan Bridge, through the Forest Park, along the Jacko, through Swords Village and ends in Lissenhall, 
where it joins the broad meadow before entering the Malahide estuary. In past days, the river would have been a very considerable stream, hampering progress through the area and needing fords to cross. We might remember also that this river was much closer to swords in those days and that a lot of commerce and trade came through the river up into Swords Village. Swords Castle too was built parallel to the river, mainly for its vital water supply. In the 19th century, there was a constant interaction between village and river for washing, watering beasts and drawing water for household use. Indeed, the river we see today is but a pale shadow of the very sizeable river it once was. The Mill Bridge, one of the first features a visitor sees from the Brackenstown Road, was the site of a large water mill back in the 1850s. In those pre-industrial days, wind, water and horsepower were the only mechanical forces available and this mill was one of the largest in the area, grinding corn from the local farmers. Richard Manders at this time owned both Brackenstown House and the mill. Both he and his family were well-connected business people coming from County Leash and making their way in the city in the 1840s. Richard Manders also made his mark on the park with the building of extensive enclosing stone walls, paths and farm buildings. Knock Sedan Bridge, built we think in 1823, is one of the finest road bridges in Ireland. Built to replace an earlier dangerous structure, it is massively buttressed and unaltered since built, though it now carries a hugely greater volume of traffic. This bridge defines the western boundary of the park. The park is also a rich and natural landscape with trees, plants and river, all combining to form a unique experience for the walker. It has many mature deciduous native trees including rowan, oak, alder and larch. This was a deliberate planting of trees dating from the 1640s onwards. However, the trees, huge beech trees, are some of the oldest and finest in Ireland. Planted in 1740 by Viscount Molesworth, their branches can be seen stretching skywards, even from Swords Manor itself. The park is also justly famed for its rare mushrooms and fungi, this damp microclimate deemed ideal. The river too is full of aquatic plants like water lilies and sorrel. Wildlife too abounds in the park with squirrels, badgers, waterfowl, herons and other birds being the most notable. At one stage, the Ward River would also have carried spawning salmon from the sea up to the headwaters of the river. The Ward Valley Forest Park comprises 220 acres specifically designated for recreational use on the western side of Swordstown. The park is laid out in two main sections, the pedestrian Jacko River section, which is easily accessible to walkers, buggies and wheelchairs, and the forest park section, which at present is accessible only by walkers. The forest park can be accessed by three main entrances, the Jacko Park entrance, the Brackenstown Road entrance, and the nearby Noxedan Estate entrance. This forest park remains one of Sword's most attractive but little known recreational areas. The park provides a variety of walks in a beautiful unspoiled landscape and is open throughout the year. Having a little background knowledge on the history and heritage of the park will greatly add to your enjoyment of your family walks. We hope you have enjoyed this brief presentation on the Ward Valley Park. Why not bring your family and friends to visit one of Sword's best kept secrets, you won't be disappointed.